Last couple of days I've been working away down on this uh, large companionway module, getting the floor all tied in, tabbing behind it, cutting out the doors, all those great things that have changed my life and now my sins are gonna come back to bite me. Uh, it's time to deal with this head module. I've gotta get it prepared to physically insert into that um, larger companionway module and there's a lot of things I need to do here. Firstly, I need to reinforce this step which actually intersects down onto the sole at the forward end of the companionway and I'll just show you a bit of vision of that where that sits there and that's actually a riser that is going to position this head perfectly in relation to the floor and to the companionway module and that's only been tabbed and epoxied on one side so I need to run tabbing all the way along underneath here. So that's a pretty simple um, method in there, a pretty simple fix and, and will really strengthen it to a point where it's never gonna ever shift. The second thing I need to do is I need to trim and tidy up the edge of this access hatch down into the black water, fresh water and bilge section. Uh, it's quite sharp, it's quite, um, it's, it's not a very nice um, edge there and I'd hate to reach my arm and gash myself because I'd probably bleed to death in the bilge. So that's the next thing. I also intend to reinforce this as well because this is essentially the structure that's holding the head and the shower in place. When you're in the shower, you're physically standing on a lid that sits over this lip here. So that is that recess here is in fact the drain down into the, uh, the grey water tank or the black water tank. Another thing I need to do here is, you can see here, this is where the damage was incurred uh, when that mould fell in. So that's crushed that step there. So I'm going to need to physically remove what's there and, uh, and somehow mould it, uh, probably just simply with tape or something. I'm not really sure, because there's gonna be some restorative gel coat work on the other side. But I also need to tidy up all the way along this recess here and apply a lot more um, reinforcement, probably another two or three layers of 600 double bias in here to really beef this up. This is a step in between the shower and the toilet, and I'll just show you a picture of that now. And uh, and any anyway, in any rough water, if you're stepping on something like that, your body weight could seriously do some damage there, and I want that to never ever be an issue inside this boat. Um, the other thing I need to do is I need to then, once all this is complete in here, is put a conduit, um, some sort of a PVC pipe through here to carry electrics through to the port side outside hull. So those are a lot of important things I need to do on here. Then I'll move on to the actual head section. And here is where the toilet sits, obviously. That needs to have a marine ply, uh, probably a, a, a 12 or 25 millimeter marine ply base laminated, epoxied, laminated in there so that I can actually screw the toilet down to it and certainly be able to move the toilet in and out as we need to replace toilet seats and the like because the type of toilet that I've bought, I physically need to remove the toilet to change the seat. It's a slanted back so that it actually conforms to the actual head here. So it's a, um, a Jabsco silent flush house size toilet. It's a proper toilet and essentially there's not a lot of room behind it to be doing toilet seats and things so you can So my day uh, on the hulls usually starts with the prep for the job that I get done just before lunch and then into afternoon lunch. I try to always prep the day before, but it's just not possible. You get to the end and you can't work on something because you've got wet resin and wet laminates laying around. So today, I've just been up in the factory here. I've cut about uh, 20 of these uh, 200 mil wide, 1.2 meter long stretches of 600 double bias because I'm right into reinforcing this head at the moment. I want to actually insert this over in there on Monday if I can and it's Friday now so if I give it a couple of days to cure before I start messing with it and bending it and shaping it to get it into place. But uh, so I basically sand it up along this line here 
all the way up into here. That is an area that needs some reinforcement. It's a vertical member of the of the, uh, of the head. You gotta remember all these big faces here. There's going to be hatches cut in them. There's going to be foam strips behind them, tying them to that, epoxying them, gluing, gluing them together. And, and obviously that's a way that I'm actually reinforcing this without actually building too much thickness into the module itself. I'm gonna use the laminated foam strips and just like members, like studs in a wall frame. Um, that's my principle. And here, I'm gonna reinforce all the way around the bottom of this shower base here, or this floor base here around the head. So lots of prep every morning, sanding. I've spent a good hour or so sanding this up. It, you can basically run your hand over that and not catch a splinter at the moment because it's that smooth. So I'm ready to basically give it a quick wipe with some styrene and get back into it. And, uh, and laminate all of these in. So that's pretty much the beginning of my day, the first hour or two. Prep, get the job done, let it go overnight, come in the next morning, all that stuff I did yesterday, all the down the head there, around the bottom of the toilet there, all rock solid, ready to go in the boat. So you can really achieve stuff just by some careful planning, and I do a lot, a lot of prep. Right, so I've totally reinforced this. I've got to work out a plywood pad and it's going to be sheathed plywood for here. Johnny's filming, thank God. I'm getting a whole new perspective of somebody filming rather than on a tripod. So this here, I'm standing there trying to work it out to do a temp, but John comes up and he goes, I won't use this. We we'll whack that in there. Perfect, eh, mate? It's always yeah, perfect, it was mate. perfect. So we'll come up with this. This is our template now John just came up with a very uh, important fact do we make this go all the way to the edge here because we believe that this hits the chine down in there show us down there John just aim it down there a bit down in there that chine butts up against this bathroom so we're going to go now go to go down and get the toilet out and work out how much how whether I have to just go back to here because there's going to be a hole here and here or maybe here and here the toilet mount, or can I make it all the way back? So I think I'm probably gonna to have to get the dunny out, aren't I, mate? Whatever you say, Captain. Absolutely. <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> okay, so I've got my um, slant back Jabsco Silent Flush Deluxe house head here in the box here. And I'm gonna just check that template I've made. I've got a fear that it's gonna be a little bit close to the edge of the plywood. So I'll have a bit of a look. We'll have a look uh, and see what's gonna happen here because I'm not convinced that it's gonna be all right. So I've got a piece of 12 millimeter plywood here that has already got uh, two layers of uh, 600 double bias on each side, plus um, it's vinyl ester as well. So less prone to rotting um, in any case. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll cut this one on my, with my jigsaw and then I'll be able to glue that on with heaps of epoxy and then I'll screw it from inside the actual toilet base. So I'll be able to make two little holes, screw it in, that'll clamp it in place, leave it there for the weekend, come back Monday and then glass over the top of it and really finally finish that. This is where all that work I did with that modifying this table saw to take this bevel ripping guy just wins. I can cut a 45 degree bevel on any straight piece of plywood like this. I've got to cut a 45 on here so I can tape it back, uh, glass it back into the back of that module. And uh, and this thing's just a winner. It means I'm guaranteed 45, easy to do. I don't have to use, I don't have to set up jigs or anything. I just basically would go for it. Okay, so next important thing after we've done the dunny base there, or the toilet base, is we've got to get a piece of foam to fit here. 20 mil foam, gonna be glued on here over the weekend, come back Monday, glass it. This module's pretty much done, eh? So John's gonna come up with an idea here. We're gonna do a quick 
set template off here with some some cardboard. Yeah, hang on a sec. All right, so we've got a piece of cardboard jammed in here. We're just going to copy this. Copy that. Copy that, Captain. All right, we'll cut that off. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, it's a bit short, so. Yeah, it's really, really short. Okay. Yeah. That's good, Captain. And then the seat pad, I'm going to do out of 20mm foam. Basically, this is going to be um, laminated with two layers of 600 double bias underneath it so that basically you can stand on the seat. Um, look, the idea of using the foam gives me incredible strength, but by by using foam rather than something like plywood, which from a generation past, boat builders had used plywood and just treat it with epoxy. Using this foam just ensures no rot, especially in a shower where there's a lot of moisture. Um, I'm basically going to cut this. So we've now got that, so that's shower seat. And, uh, and I'm keeping all these templates, just so if anybody ever buys my mould off me and uh, wants to give it a go making them themselves, I've got all the templates done. This is time-saving stuff, like huge time-saving stuff. Friday frenzy again. I'm just always at the last. It's gone dark. I'm hanging out here. I'm dying to get home. I've had a massive week in here. Um, but basically, I've got the plywood panel done for underneath my head here and the seat foam. Now, I'm going to glue these in before I leave. I'm away uh, tomorrow and Sunday, so I won't be back here till Monday. That'll give this you know, this is a chance to really set because I'm going to put a heap of epoxy of that technical glue in there. That is going to be as solid as a rock once that's in. And then this uh, this foam panel here under the seat here, I'm going to glass that in as well. So I'll glue that in with the um, with the uh, sea light um, bedding compound for the foam. And, uh, and then I'll be able to come back on Monday, give it a light sand, laminate that, laminate that, head is done. And then we're trying to work out a way to actually get it in to that companionway module so that I can still work underneath it. If I can get it in there and be able to lift it up and down, up and down so I can get it perfect, um, I'm gonna be able to get all the plumbing done before I insert the head in, which will be really good. That means I can sort of have unabated access. But at this stage, I'm just gonna get this finished. I'll mix up some, um, some brews and get it on and then go home and I'm gonna have a brew. Now, because I've got no way of clamping that on, ideally I'd turn the mold upside down put some weights on it, but I've got no chance. So the masking tape it is, basically I'm going to take it and try to apply some pretty considerable pressure into it. Now this guy here is a bit of a different story. I'm gonna put three screws and I'm trying to try to get one in here. It's a bit hard to get to. Luckily I've got this hole here. But what you can do when you screw something in, you gotta then back it out and then screw it in again. Because if you don't, you're gonna end up with a massive gap in between the plywood and the fiberglass. It's like when you're trying to drill two boards together. The best way you can do it is clamp them together and then don't allow them to rise as the screw's trying to find its hole. The problem with this is I've got no way of pushing it in. Plus, there's peel ply on the other side of this bit of wood. I've got to remember to remove that. So I'm going to drill these three holes and then I know that I can find the holes easily once the epoxy's there. And then, and only then, will be able, I'll be able to remove it and put it in. But yeah, it's been a bit of fun um, trying to get this in place, to be honest. Oh, shit, that's a tiny hole. Oh, that's just bullshit. <laughs> oh, that was an effort. It's like working through a bloody mail slot. Fair dinkum. Okay, so you have to remind me to take the peel ply off, so I'll take that off. I'm gonna slather this with epoxy, glue it in place, screw it in, and go home for a beer, because I've had a gutful today. I'm absolutely cactus. So. That's all been prepared. In fact, I only laminated this yesterday, so this is green. Um, or the, 
material I'm actually bonding this to is green. So that's another chemical bond. Not only is it a physical bond with a lot of epoxy, it's actually a chemical bond as well. And I just need to put that in place. I could probably just push that in place and not even screw that. There's, that, there's enough epoxy there. The amount of work in building a boat, it's insane. If I had a team of 10 blokes here, I would have knocked this out in a year and been able to film it and do the, the production of the videos as well. I'm a one man show guys, you've got to give you a little bit of a break, you know, knocking out the videos and two videos a week at the moment, one generally on the composite shop and one on the, uh, the build plus the editing plus the filming, it's slowing me up. Plus standing here talking to you guys, a lot of standing around talking, but to be honest, I actually use that as my break when I, uh, when I, chat to the camera, it's my chance of recuperating from generally pretty hard yakka. The last screw, and then uh, I'll smell a bit of bunking around. Job done, that's it, it's the weekend. Have you enjoyed this episode, guys? It's been a bit of an epic. Um, back on Monday and uh, I'll be into some more. So thanks for joining me, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to zip over to that commerce shop, check out uh, the kayak build. I've been a bit of a big year, so I've got a lot on the go at the moment and uh, and I'm trying to really make the most of it and make the most of it for YouTube as well, try and get as much of my information out there because once I finish this thing, there's no more YouTube. I'm gonna nick off and I'm gonna put up one video I've been sailing out through the heads and then that'll be the end. Can't, can't imagine it, can you? No, neither can I. Catch you guys, see ya.